Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm going to be answering in this video question number five from the uh, Solomon F collection of PE3 or the old C3 papers. And um, this question is corresponding to question number nine from my end of topic worksheet for chapter three of the P3 um, Edexo book. And this is like a, a this is a question about trig functions and here we have to sketch the graph of the reciprocal trig function y equals 2 plus secant x minus pi over 6 for x in the interval between 0 and 2 pi so the way I would think the, the best way to approach such a question is to first I guess think about the the sketch of the original function for y equals secant x which is y equals cosine x so if I think about y equals cosine x, and then from that sketch y equals secant x, if you're not sure how, see, some of you might not be sure exactly how y equals secant x looks. So if you think about what its reciprocal function is, which you can, um, you know, you should know very well that the, the reciprocal of secant is cosine, and the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, and the reciprocal of tan is cotangent. So if we know that the reciprocal of, of secant of x is cosine of x, then we can sketch y equals cosine x, and from that we can then go sketch secant of x and then perform the transformation that needs to be done in order for it to be for, uh, for us to sketch the particular graph we need to sketch. So we have to show the coordinates of turning points and asymptotes on this graph. So let's f make a start by first making a sketch of y equals cosine x. Now y equals cosine x, and we've got to do it between 0 and, and 2 pi. As we know, it has a maximum of 1, a minimum of minus 1. That's for cosine x. And it starts off at 0, 1, and it goes down to pi over 2, and then to reach the minimum at pi, back to 0 at 3 pi over 2, and back to 1 at 2 pi. So I've just, I've drawn it first, and then I'm going to put these. This is 3 pi over 2. This is pi, and this is pi over 2. Okay, I'll try to be as accurate as I can. Of course, it's just a sketch, so that's how y equals cosine x looks. So now I'm going to use this to draw y equals secant x. Now, what we should realize is um, y equals secant x is the reciprocal of cosine x. So if you think about that, when cosine x equals 1, so does secant x. So they're going to basically meet at here, at this point here. And when secant, when cosine x equals minus 1, secant x will be 1 over minus 1, which is also minus 1. So they'll also meet at pi, minus 1 pi, pi minus 1, sorry. And we should also realize when cosine x becomes 0, secant x will be undefined. So that's the asymptote that they're talking about. So we can see that cosine x becomes 0, pi over 2, and 3, pi over 2. So there's going to be like asymptotes at those points. So let me just draw some asymptotes here. So at pi over 2. And uh, 3 pi over 2. Let me just draw them first and I'll move them. I haven't quite got them going through the right place. That's better. So that will be the, those will be the asymptotes. So now, if I was to draw now um, the secant of x, I know that it hits at, one, one, at 0, 1. And I also know that as cosine x gets smaller, then you've got 1 over something. As, cosine, as this gets smaller, the secant of x is going to get bigger. So this is going to actually, as cosine x drops, this is going to rise. So it's going to go like this. We'll get closer to the asymptote. And similarly here, this curve is going to go something like this. So as, as this gets um, bigger in terms of its magnitude, this is going to get smaller in terms of its magnitude. This gets further away from the x-axis, this gets closer to the x-axis. Okay, now this is going to hit, hit its same point at minus 1, and then it's going to do the opposite, because as this is getting as this is getting um, smaller in magnitude, this is get bigger in magnitude. As this gets closer to the x-axis, this will go further away from the x-axis. So it's going to have this type of shape, something like that. And then similarly on this side, this is going to um, be 1 over here, and as you know, as this gets bigger, this will get smaller. So it's going to have this type of shape. So now we've done 
y equal this is now y equals secant x kind of it's okay so it's just a sketch it's not bad all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get rid of the cosine x part because we use that to help us sketch this so i'm going to just get rid of that part Okay, there we are. Now we can do, do the transformations needed. So we have to draw actually y equal y equals um, secant x minus pi over six plus two. So we've got to draw y equals two plus the secant of pi over six uh, minus oh sorry secant of x minus pi over six. Okay. So what's going to happen first is all these um, coordinates here um, are going to move pi over 6 to the right. All the x coordinates will shift pi over 6 to the right and then all the y coordinates will be raised up by 2. So the initial uh, position of this, 0, 1, okay, it's going to, what's going to happen to 0, 1? Let's just let's use the space down there. So in fact, we'll use the space up here. 0, 1, what's going to happen to it? It's going to be become pi over 6 and you're going to add 2 to it 2 so you add pi over 6 to the x and you add 2 to the y so this will become pi over 6 and 2 and the the minimum point here which was um, or, well it's a maximum really is going to be pi minus 1 so let's see what happens to pi minus 1 that's one another turning point so you've got pi and minus 1 you're going to add pi over 6 to pi which will give you pi over 6 plus 6 that's 7 pi over 6 and it's going to go from minus 1, you have to add 2 to it, so it's going to go to 1. And this turning point here, well, that's going to go out of our range. This turning point here is going to go out of our range. Okay, and the asymptotes are going to move. So you're going to have one asymptote, which is x equals pi over 2. It's going to go, go to x equals pi over 2 plus pi over 6, which is um, pi over 2, that's 3 pi over 6 plus pi over 6. That's going to be uh, uh, 4 pi over 6. That's 2 pi over 3. So it's going to go to 2 pi over 3. And the other one, which is x equals 3 pi over 2, you're going to add pi over 6 to it. So that's going to be um, that's going to be 6 pi over... So that's going to be... So you add pi over 6. So you're going to be 9 pi over 6 plus 1. That's going to be 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. All right, because you're going to have 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 6, you have to multiply by 3, um, both numerator and denominator, that gives you 9 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 10 pi over 6, that's 5 pi over 3. So the new asymptotes will be in these two places, and the, these will be the turning points. So let's just um, move everything along. So let's just put 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is going to be somewhere over here, just it's moved across slightly. This is going to be um, 5 pi over 3, Okay, and so let's move the asymptotes along first. That's one of the asymptotes. And that's the other asymptote. Okay, now this is going to move across something like that. And now there's going to be a minimum, so it's going to go up. Touch that x-axis there. So this, as we said, is now pi over 6. Pi over 6. So this is the point pi over 6 and pi over 6 and 1. Oh, we haven't finished yet. I won't put that in yet because we have to lift it up as well. Sorry. Okay, so now this also moves across. I think this is going to be two halves. Something like that. And the turning point is going to be pi over 6 plus pi, which is 7 pi over 6. Okay, but we still haven't finished because we have to also add 2. So now I'm going to add 2 to each of these. So this is going to go up to, up to 3. The turning point is going to go up to 3. So that's 1, 2, 3. So let me just draw it. It's just a sketch. So This is going to be raised up three units two units sorry so the turning point becomes at three now um 
this is also going to be raised up so the turning point gets to one gonna have a shape something like that and we can continue on I think the asymptote's not straight is it let me straighten off of it that's better okay and this also now um, yeah we didn't move it across did we that had to move across first and then it goes up okay so in this case the turning point is going to be off the pit it's not going to quite reach the turning point turning point is going to be there so it'll be slightly above where it should be so this is kind of going into all our writing over there but no problem so this is our asymptote and this is going to be something like this So let me just zoom out because we can't really see it that well. So it should look, it should have some type of shape like this. Okay, I've drawn it a bit out of the page. Not out of the page, but into that writing. But it should have this type of look to it. Let me just move it down a bit. And then get rid of some of this stuff. Okay. Okay. So that's basically the way it should look. So I'm going to mark on here the points that I need now. So this is the point which is pi over 6. This is the turning point pi over 6. What am I doing? Pi over 6 and 3. So this is pi over 6, 3. And this is the point uh, 7 pi over 6 and 1. Okay, those are the two turning points that we have here. And this is the asymptote x equals, um, what happened there, 2 pi over 3. I moved up, that's supposed to be over here. x equals 2 pi over 3. And this is x equals 5 pi over 3. And there we have our graph. We'll just get rid of that part there. Okay, so that is the graph of y equals the 2 plus the secant of x minus pi over 6. Okay, so it's try to do it as best as I can. Those are the turning points. Those are the asymptotes. That's what we have to mark. Now, part B of the question is telling us to do the following. It's telling us to find in terms of pi the x coordinates of the points where the graph crosses the x axis, and this was the equation that we had. So we can just solve this equation um, when it crosses the x axis. We know y equals zero. So you know the x axis. We can say y equals zero. So we can just make y equals zero. So you have two plus the secant of x minus pi over six is equal to zero. So we can say secant of x minus pi over 6 is equal to minus 2. So we've got to solve this equation. Um, so we can we can say that if the secant of x minus pi over 6 equals minus 2, that means the cosine of x minus pi over 6 is equal to negative a half. So the solution to this equation will be the same as the solution to that equation. So I need to find the solution to this. Now if I put, if I put inverse cosine of minus a half in my calculator, inverse cosine of minus a half to find what the angle is I'll have inverse cosine of negative a half it's going to give me um, in radians it's going to give me um, an obtuse angle sorry an obtuse angle um, and it will be corresponding to pi over 3 it's going to be 2 pi over 3 so x minus pi over 6 will give me 2 pi over 3 corresponds to 120 degrees let me just make sure so I say inverse cosine make sure it's in radian mode which it is so inverse cosine of negative a half negative a half 
And as I said, it's going to be um, 2 pi over 3, which is correct. Okay, so then that's the first solution. I need to find all the solutions um, up to 2 pi. Okay, so the other solution will be 2 pi minus 2 pi over 3, because that's how the cosine curve, the two main angles are the one the calculator gives, and then 360 minus the one the calculator gives. So this is going to be 2 pi minus, that's going to be uh, that's 6 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. Okay, if you want to just make sure, you do 2 pi minus the answer. So 2 pi minus the answer gives us 4 pi over 3. So we know that x minus pi over 6 is equal to 2 pi over 3 and also 4 pi over 3. So we want to find x, so I have to add pi over 6 to both of these. So I'm going to have 2 pi over 3 plus pi over, pi over 6. That's 2 pi over 3. That's going to be 4 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. And I'm going to have, this is like 8 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 9 pi over 6. 6. So these are the two solutions and they are within our range. Okay. Now what we should have actually done is gone pi over 6 backwards as well. Okay. Because um, let's see. 2 pi minus pi over 6. Yeah, that's okay. So if we'd gone pi over 6 back, backwards, we would have ha actually had to get the solutions from negative pi over 6 to 2 pi. That's going to be um, 2 pi over 6, that's 10 pi over 6, that's up to 9 pi over 6. We could go up to 9 pi over 6. And our, our answers are all just about within the range. Okay, because if I take away, if I, if I take away pi over 6 from 2 pi, I'm going to get, um, that's going to be 12 pi over 6 minus pi, no, actually, it's 11 pi over 6, sorry. Yeah, so we're well within our range. Okay, we're well within our range here. Um, yeah, we're well with pi over, 5 pi over 6 and 9 pi over 6, which is the same as 5 pi over 6, and this is 3 pi over 2 in its simplest form. Divide by 3. So these are the two solutions to this question, because this was uh, 4 pi over 3, which is going to be 8 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 9 pi over 6. That's right. This is 4 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 5, yeah. So those are the two solutions for this problem, and that's it. That's the answer. That's those are oh, we got the x coordinates. That's right. Those are the x coordinates of where the curve hits the x axis. Okay. Thank you for watching.